Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to talk about the Joint Tool. The Joint Tool can be found in the Animation menu set under the Skeleton menu, and it's the first command here, the Joint Tool. Let's go in the Options here. And this is a tool, so whenever you choose this option from the menu, nothing happens until you start clicking and making joints. There's two types of commands in, in Maya for the most part. There's tools, which are labeled as such, and then things that are not labeled with a tool on the end of it are commands that happen right away. So whenever you click joint tool or IK handle tool or IK spline handle tool and so on, it won't do anything until you click and specify where you want the action to happen. But when you have something like mirror joint with no tool on the end, or human IK or whatever, when you click those, those commands happen right away to the selected uh, element in my scene. So this is a joint tool, so when we click it like this, nothing happens until we start uh, clicking in our scene to create joints. And over here on the left, we have our joint tool settings. I'm going to click Reset Tool. Because this is sort of like a drawing application in Maya, where you kind of click and add points, similar to how you create like a curve. But whenever you click in, in your scene, you will place a joint. Let me zoom in here so you can kind of see it. And the joint is kind of just this little ball. It has no physical form in the sense where, you, when if you were to render your scene, you won't see any joints. A joint is part of a skeleton and the skeleton is made of joints and bones so right now I have a joint because I've clicked once if I click again with the tool still active it creates a second joint and a bone in between them let me hide the grid so here we have two joints connected by a bone you'll see the bone is kind of arrow shaped and this shows you which direction the skeleton is currently flowing. The first joint you create is kind of the root or the top of the hierarchy and then the second joint you create is connected to the first. So whenever, I, if I were to finish my skeleton now just by clicking the W key on my keyboard or hitting enter, I've now finished creating my skeleton for the most part for, for now. If I were to select the first joint I made it selects the entire skeleton beneath its hierarchy. In this case, this bone and this joint. So if I were to move this joint, it moves the second joint with it. If I were to click on the second joint, you'll notice the first joint is not selected because this joint only controls anything below it in the hierarchy, which right now there's nothing. So if I move this joint, it moves on its own and the first joint stays put. Before we go into all of the tool settings, let's just talk about placing joints and moving them. I'm going to switch to the front view. I can just click and click and place joints that way. And then click and hold and drag, I can click and move the joint. And you'll notice as the joint gets further and further away how that bone radius changes. So you can just see how it does it in real time changing shape like such and then once you let go the joint is placed now while you're still creating the skeleton if you want to change that you can middle mouse click and drag and you can then change that position still even after you've placed it the first time and then you can click again and so on if you want to undo let me hide the grid if you want to undo you can just hit the Z key and undo like so so once I hit enter, and I've finalized my skeleton here, you can still go back and move things. You can move each joint sequentially. You can use the arrow keys to move through the joint hierarchy to move joints around. If you want to move a joint without moving the bone, the joints that are connected to it, hold down the D key, D as in dog, It'll put you in insert mode or edit pivot mode, and then you can move this joint around like this and fine tune its placement without adjusting the placement of the joint that is parented to it. 
if you were just trying to move this joint, you'll notice this joint also moves. Hold down D and move this joint and then it will not. It will stay in place. And you see I have this little blue circle here. If I click this, I can then switch to rotating. I can rotate the local axis of this one joint without affecting the other joints in the chain. Click it again, it goes back to movement. Then let go of D. And you see how my move tool has changed because I rotated it. Hit the D key, click the blue circle, and rotate this back to be kind of more along, more aligned with the skeleton chain, and then let go, and my movement tool has changed like such. That's what using the D key to go to edit pivot mode. Now let's say you want to add to your skeletal chain but you've already kind of completed this skeleton. There's lots of ways you can do it but let's just reactivate the joint tool by pressing the Y key which the Y key is a shortcut for the last tool you used which in my case is the joint tool. So if you click on an existing joint within the joint tool like this one, I click it. I did not make a new joint, I just selected that joint and now I'm just continuing the chain. So I hit enter. You'll see I, had, I did not make a second joint on top of the other one. It simply selected that joint and then continued the chain of joints once I started clicking after that. And that works with any joint in the skeleton. You don't have to pick the one on the end. If I go back to my joint tool and click this one and then start clicking, you see now my skeletal chain is coming off of that joint. Go back and click it again. I can make another chain through here and so on. Let's open up the, let me close the tool settings for a minute. And let's open up the outliner. You can kind of see how the hierarchy works. Let me expand this out. You see joint one is the first joint I made way up here and then there's joint two which is this one right here. If I expand it in the outliner you see joint two has joint 3, 10, and 15 all connected to it. And I'm just going to expand all of joint 3. So joint 3 would be this chain. So all of these joints are in this hierarchy from joint 2 to joint 3 going along the path. If I expand the joint 10 chain, that's all this path over here on the right. If I expand the joint 15 chain, that's the joint path in the middle. So this is what that hierarchy looks like. You have your top joint up here, the next one here, and then all of the ones branching off in those three paths all connected with this line in the hierarchy. So this is what a joint hierarchy looks like. So really quickly, using just what I've uh, shown you here, you can see how a, like a character skeleton could be made. If I click here, and then go up a couple times. This is, say, the backbone of my character. Hit enter. Back to my joint tool. I'll click the initial joint again and I'll go out this way. Like this. Hit enter. The Y key to go back to my joint tool. I'll click this one again. Go out this way. Hit enter. like so. I'll make another one on top here for my head. So there's a really simple and not very good uh, human skeleton for like a, a character. And we'll have videos going over more in-depth tools on how you can make a clean character skeleton in the future. But again I'll expand my outliner here. You can see all of the joints associated. Now in the outliner, just like with parenting objects, these are all objects that are parented together. So joint 11 is parented to joint 4. Joint 14 is also parented to joint 4. Joint 17 is parented to joint 4. So you can middle mouse click in the outliner and drag joint 17, for example, around and parent it to something else. Say if I wanted to parent it to joint one. And you see what happens in my scene now. If I move that bone, you see that joint, I should say, 
you'll see this new bone has extended from joint 1 up to joint 17. So skeletal hierarchy works with parenting. If I want this joint to have a bone coming from a different joint, I simply select it, hold shift, select a different joint, and hit the P key, and the parent, P being the shortcut for parent, and that parenting action makes it, the bone change position from being parented to this one to now being parented to this one. So it's very easy to edit your joints after you've made them. If I wanted to make a skeleton for my hand with fingers, I'll, for example, go to my front view here and I'll just make a quick finger skeleton, move it up here, back to my perspective view, I'll duplicate it, control D, so I've duplicated my fingers a few times, and then I'll just select all four of these, hold shift, select this one, hit the P key, and now my fingers have all been parented to my wrist. So it's very, it's pretty easy to place joints and parent them to the proper joints and so on. You, one thing you want to make sure though is that you're parenting in the right direction. For an arm, for instance, you want the shoulder to be the parent of the elbow, which is the parent of the wrist. You don't want to do it the other way around. And if you want to put some curvature in the back of the character, you can hold the D key, and you can use the edit mode, kind of edit the curvature of these things. Like so. Anyway, this is not a tutorial on how to make a character skeleton. It's more, more just how the joints work, how you place them, how to edit them, you parent them, unparent them, change their order, and reposition them. Now, another thing to think about when you look at joints is naming. Right now, I have joint 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 17. And so if I say, hey, I want to move the wrists, and if you look over here in the hierarchy, after some practice, you can probably tell which is which, but really, which one is the wrist? 17? No, that's the head, you know, for example. So it's a good idea to, to name your bones, name your joints, to so you'll know how they should be uh, animated in the future. So if it's joint 17, I can double click in the channel box and name it head, for example. Or hit control A to open the attribute editor. And you can rename things here as well. So I can name this one right shoulder, for example. And Maya also has a labeling system. If I were to scroll down here in my attribute editor, you see there's joint labeling. I can select the joint, such as this one. And even though it's not named right shoulder, joint 14, I can tell it the type. I can scroll down here, we have shoulder. And then the side is right shoulder. And then I click the draw label check box. And now it's labeled shoulder right. That's another way you can kind of label your joints so you understand which are which. This should actually be the left shoulder. <laughs> like that. So now that we've kind of gone over placing joints, editing them, parenting them, moving them, let's go into our joint tool settings. Let me just uh, delete this skeleton guy here. We don't need him anymore. And let's go into some of these options.